Hey everybody, let's run through a quick install of Fedora Server 37 Beta in Proxbox. This is going to be a bit of a speed run. I'm going to keep the commentary to a minimum and speed this up as much as possible at the end. New VM. All right, let's go ahead and reboot our system. Okay, so Fedora server has Cockpit installed by default. HTOP is not installed. NeoFetch is not installed. So let's see if we can do a little bit of updating. And see what we've got. Operation aborted. I'm not sure why that happened, but uh, DNF upgrade hash Y need to add sudo and hopefully these commands will work the way they do on Debian and Ubuntu. Okay, so we've got the base of the updates completed at this point. And let's do, let's get uh, NeoFetch and HTOP installed. See if these exist in the repositories in Fedora. And it looks like it is taking 111 packages to install NeoFetch and HTOP. So, see what we get when, when this is done. All right, so as it's complete, NeoFetch. Fedora 37 Server Edition pre-release. 
That looks good. Uptime 13 hours 42 minutes. All right. We're on H top. It looks like we're running around 3% of two processors. Between 2 and 3% of two processor cores. All right. Well, so part of the reason for wanting to take a look at this, I'm going to go ahead and log out, is what we have displayed here on this line. So if we go to our IP address for this server and port 9090, we will get cockpit installed by default. Advanced, accept risk, and you will log in with your username that you set up during install and your password. And here you've got other options. You can connect to other servers running Fedora, but we'll go ahead and log in. Don't need to save that at the moment. And we've got cockpit. I don't see where it identifies itself as cockpit, but this is in fact cockpit. Uh, under session, we've got SSH keys and display language. We can click the button here. Enter the password again. And we've got administrative access listed right here at the top. And as is common with cockpit across all platforms, you can view logs. You can work with storage and see what's going on there. NFS is not set up currently. iSCSI is not set up currently, but it does list your drives and devices. You've got networking. You can edit firewall rules. So that is nice there. You can see the accounts and services that are running. Here's your targets, sockets, timers, and paths. Applications, it's got security enhanced Linux in place. And you can do different things here. Software updates. We are already up to date. We did that at the command line. And automate, automatic updates are not set up. You can enable it from here. And then of course you've got a terminal and you can in fact increase the font size if you'd like. And you can set different types of backgrounds for your terminal. Uh, while it doesn't seem to mention that this is in fact cockpit, it, it is, and I guess it depends on what you want to do with your server, whether it's a bonus or unnecessary to have this installed by default. But uh, for those new to Linux server administration, I can see where this may make things a little easier. Now, I'm, I guess, old school enough that I'm never going to be completely swayed by a web-based administration panel. Uh, there are too many things I can do from the command line, and the command line doesn't really intimidate me at this point, but it's been 25 years that I've been running Linux, so I've been through the growing pains and I've 
dealt with bad documentation and the time that I've had to invest in experimentation to get things to work uh, when I didn't have a web-based uh, administration panel. Um, and then for years, the best that was produced was Webmin, which was uh, very complicated compared to what's presented in Cockpit. Now, if we log in one more time, you will uh, see, you know, this is pretty logically laid out. You know, you've got the option to reboot your server or shut down your server. Um, you've got some options. You've got a help system built in about web console. Uh, and there it does identify it as cockpit. And so this is version 277. And 277 is the most up-to-date version. Since Cockpit's a Red Hat project or Fedora project, uh, it's come out of that ecosystem, the version of Cockpit on other systems may lag behind a few revisions. The thing I wanted to point out here is that Cockpit also supports a large list of optional and third-party applications. And so you can find all the information about adding these to your cockpit pretty easily and greatly extend the usefulness of this for your administration needs. All right, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, this has been a first look at Fedora 37 server uh, with cockpit. And we will be looking at other Linux distributions with cockpit in future videos. And on that note, thank you all for watching. I'd greatly appreciate if you'd take a moment to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.